uh, good morning, uh, dear colleagues, and uh, my greetings from St. Petersburg, everyone. And uh, I present here um, uh, the archive of Institute for History of Material Culture. And at first, of course, I would like uh, to express my gratitude to the organizers so for the opportunity to be here and uh, to show you a small part of our collection. Uh, okay. Uh, can, can you see my screen? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, and I'm a archaeologist as uh, as I said, maybe. <laughs> and at first, uh, in the beginning, I would like uh, to uh, say a few words about uh, our archive in general because it's important to to do this uh, for the, for a better understanding of why we can look at the history of Russian archaeological photography through our collection, and the history of our archive started from the 1859 uh, when the Imperial Archaeological Commission was established uh, by Russian Emperor Alexander II. And its activities combined research, organizing, and coordinating function. Uh, throughout its existence, the Archaeological Commission was supported by the Ministry of Imperial Court. And its high status uh, as an institution was confirmed by the patronage of the Emperor himself. Since uh, the 1880s, it was located in the Hermitage, uh, the main museum in, in, of Imperial Russia, and collaborated with the curators of the museum. All the most important archaeological finds were recorded in the commission and then transferred to the collection of the Hermitage. Uh, the commission had its own expedition and also controlled the excavations of other institutions and private individuals. By the end of the 19th century, the activities of the commission uh, had established the centralized system of regulation of archaeological um, resources in Russia on state and public land. Uh, it was based on the personal license uh, for researchers to conduct excavations. After that, they had to send a report to the commission with an inventory and description of finds, as well as drawings and photos. The researchers could not get the following license uh, for investigations without a report. And this practice has initiated the creation of a unique corpus of sources for the Russian national archaeology, which is stored now in our archive. And currently, the materials of the Imperial Archaeological Commission includes 9,000 manuscripts and uh, over 70,000 photographic documents. Fortunately, after the revolution, uh, the commission was not dissolved, only transformed to, into the Academy for, uh, for the History of Material Culture. And uh, the archives have been perfectly preserved until the present day. And moreover, remarkable materials have been added to the archives from scientific, historical, and archaeological societies and other organizations closed during the Soviet times, and also from personal collections of outstanding Russian scientists. And now our archive uh, contains about uh, 700,000 documents, folders, files, negatives, imprints, plans, drawings, and so on. And return to the 19th century, uh, the centralization system of all archaeological data in the Imperial Archaeological Commission led to the fact that our archive includes now the most representative collection of Russian archaeological photography of the 19th, early 20th centuries. A specialized unique photo complex was intentionally and centrally collected from all the territory of the empire within 70 years. And the collection includes uh, the commission's own photographs taken during excavations and scientific travels of EARC members, uh, and photographs of uh, archaeological finds uh, taken after work in the studio located in the Hermitage. Uh, numerous photos from all regions uh, of Russia related to occasional finds and hoards, as well as images documenting uh, the archaeological excavations were also included. 
Therefore, the analysis of our photo collection may give a sense and a fuller picture of uh, archaeological photography development in Russia in the early dates. Uh, now, uh, I think uh, you, of course, know that uh, photo fixation is very important in field uh, archaeological works, but this was not always uh, the case. Photography has already been uh, invented before the Imperial Archaeological Commission was formed, but uh, it had not been widely used in scientific archaeological studies. Archaeologists, in particular EAC staff members, quickly recognized the benefits of photography as very promising new documentation method and began uh, to collect photographs in various historical uh, disciplines from when the commission was established. And um, the EAC reports of excavations in the south of Russia from the early 1860s were accompanied uh, these, the static photographs representing the archaeological finds. And you see here the albums, uh, the, the albums uh, from reports uh, archaeological of archaeological of the archaeological commission and uh, photos uh, inside them. And only rare photographs reflect field studies. And you see uh, one of them, uh, this photo uh, was taken in 1872 in Kerch. And we can see here um, showers and researchers and also several photos was, uh, were taken by the EARC chairman, Count Alexei Bobrinsky during the excavation of Bureau Mounds in the late 1880s. It should be noted that Bobrinsky, who headed uh, the EARC from 1886 until the revolution, attached great importance to, use, uh, to the use of photography in archaeology. Probably these uh, was due to the domestic devotion to photography. In fact, his grandfather was one of the first in Russia to order uh, the expensive French camera for making daguerreotypes. And he obtained it from Dagger himself. And only few people could afford to, to have uh, that luxury at that time. Even the Academy of Science could not buy it. Uh, currently, a large collection of daguerreotypes and other photographs of the Bobrinsky family are kept in the Hermitage, and we have an, the archaeological part of uh, Alexei Bobrinsky's photo collection. Photographic processing, processes and uh, technique were successfully improved by the early 1890s, and uh, this was uh, uh, the reason why the period um, of mass photography in Russian archaeology began. The number of photographs during uh, the research process were all steeply. Uh, moreover, the images uh, could be taken inside the objects uh, under study. For example, during the fixation of a tomb painting, and you can see one of them on the top of this slide. At the same time, the EARC had its own photographers, which left us the richest heritage. And uh, at the end of the 19th century, the commission carried out the most intensive excavations in southern, in, um, in, southern, in, in southern Russia, in Kerch. One of the local photographers, Mikhail Rubanchik, constantly collaborated with the commission over 20 years. He photographed uh, both finds and excavations, uh, and uh, all his photos had the high quality, as you see. At that time, the historical past of Russia and archaeology became extremely uh, popular among the widest social groups. And uh, Mikhail Rubanchik also sold his archaeological photographs as postcards. And uh, here you see, for example, uh, he made uh, postcards from this picture. Uh, in St. Petersburg, one of the local masters uh, photographed the antiquities for the commission until the end uh, of the 1880s. And when he was replaced by Vasily Druzhinin, Vasily Druzhinin was the member of uh, IAC and uh, a famous Russian scientist, historian, and collector. Photography was his hobby, but uh, as you see, he took excellent photographs. Vasily Druzhinin promoted the obligatory photography of all archaeological finds, finds in uh, the commission. And uh, also, he taught to photograph the IAC watchman. Uh, Ivan Barshevsky, uh, oh, no, not Ivan Barshevsky, Ivan Chistikov, sorry. Uh, he quickly developed his skills and became a permanent photographer of a commission from the mid 1890s until the revolution. He photographed antiquities uh, in uh, a studio in the Hermitage, 
made journeys, uh, the staff members to take picture during the expedition and prepare photos for publications. Uh, Chistipov invented all his photographs and uh, it's made uh, it possible to attribute the IAC photographic collection for us. Uh, he continued uh, uh, to work as an archaeological photographer after the revolution until the early 18, uh, uh, 1930s. And his heritage includes now more than 40,000 photographs. The ERC involved well-known Russian professional photographers in some individual projects. And uh, for example, uh, Dmitry Yermakov took about a thousand photos of archaeological finds and architectural monuments in the Caucasus uh, for the ERC. And uh, Samuel Dudin uh, accompanied the commission staff members in Central Asia expeditions and made a series of beautiful photos. Uh, some EAC members themselves produced photos in expeditions, and here we should note the activities of Nikolai Mar. Uh, he was a talented Russian archaeologist, linguist, and orientalist. Mar uh, attached had a great importance to the use of photography in research work. And uh, in, 19, uh, in 1892, Nikolai Mar completed a practical photography course in the Russian Technical uh, Society before his trip to Armenia, supported by the, ARC, the EAC. And he requested the commission to provide him a camera before expedition. And uh, this camera gave him a hard time during this trip. Uh, many uh, research points were located in the mountains and he described in his uh, field diary how difficult it was to carry a 16 kilograms loaded camera under the hot sun and icy wind. In the evening, he gave all his time uh, to the photo development and printing. Certainly his first photo uh, were not very perfect, but then he improved his skills and uh, worked together with professional photographers. At the beginning of the uh, 20th century, Nicolas Mar collected a huge photo complex during his numerous expeditions. Unfortunately, many photographs were lost during the Civil War, but a lot of them are kept in our archive, in his personal collections. At the end of the 19th century, archaeology often meant the study of material culture in general. So archaeologists uh, not only excavate, excavated sites, but also studied architecture, frescoes, ancient inscriptions, weapons, and so on. Architectural researchers were the first who understood the photography possibilities, speed, objectivity, and accuracy. The Archaeological Commission played a leading role in, re in rest restoration and architectural research on the territory in Russia in the late 18th and early 20th century, as well in archaeology, and therefore a large number of, photograph uh, of photos of architectural monuments have been preserved in our materials. And, uh, uh, Ivan Barshevsky now, <laughs> one of the most famous uh, Russian photographers. He sent a series of his beautiful photos of ancient Russian architecture to the IAC in 1886. He wanted to turn scientists' attention to preservation issues of these monuments. And modern researchers call Barshevsky the patriarch of the Russian architectural photography. Uh, and each his prints is a masterpiece of art. I think so. Ivan Barshevsky approached uh, the architectural photography as an archaeologist or art historian. He sought to reproduce the monuments as accurately and documentarily as possible. Ivan Barshevsky constantly collaborated with various scientific societies and of course, uh, these, uh, the Imperial Archaeological Commission. Moreover, after the revolution, when he was 68, uh, uh, 67, sorry, Barshevsky graduated from the Archaeological Institute and became a professional archaeologist. Many architectural buildings were photographed uh, by already mentioned Ivan Chistikov. And uh, you see uh, photos from uh, 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 Central Asia expeditions uh, of the of end of the 19th century. And uh, one more uh, of his famous works, uh, the complete photo fixation uh, of a restoration ancient church near Novgorod in 1903-1904. 
Uh, the commission architects also took photographs. And finally, uh, the ERC archive uh, had co collected over 20,000 architectural photographs by the time of revolution. Archaeology in uh, the 19th, early 20th century was merely developed as a science in Russia and uh, the subject matter was interpreted quite broadly. Therefore, the archaeological photography also proved to be versatile and multifunctional. Uh, there are many landscapes, portraits, reportage and uh, ethnographic photographs. And uh, I, have show you, I have shown you uh, in my presentation different types uh, of archeological photos and one, two types more. Uh, uh, sometimes uh, to emphasize something, maybe finds or uh, stratigraphy, uh, planigraphy, uh, photographs have been painted into these uh, watercolors. And uh, of course, my favorite series and a, a wonderful series of photographs that could be called the archaeologist uh, of 19th, early 20th century. And uh, of course, it's only a small part. Uh, I have done an extremely brief <laughs> description of our archaeological photo collection. Uh, all these photos serve primarily as documents for archaeological and architectural studies, of course. Uh, uh, they represent the size, shape, location, and appearance of uh, the antiquities and architecture. Many of them disappeared due to different human activities, and only photographs now can give information about them. They also documented the development of archaeological excavation mythology, as well as the changes in research directions of Russian archaeology. And that's why our photography collection are actively used by scientists in diff of different specialties. Uh, the photographer certainly had to record the researches first, but uh, they often chose the location, composition, and story in this way that made the photography uh, photographs not only a document, but also an object of artistic value. And at the same time, all these images have already become a part of historical photography and show the photographic techniques and process development. They are currently shown uh, at exhibitions, not only like uh, scientific study illustration, but also like the uh, photographic art exhibits. Uh, the 21st century excavation became, uh, be excavations became uh, highly sophisticated. Computer aided uh, and digital techniques are actively used. The archaeologists fully uh, fix the process of their excavations and uh, take a lot of photographs and widely use the photogrammetry. Of course, this is a great achievement of uh, technology and science. Uh, on negative sides, uh, I can say that modern archaeological photography is strictly formalized according to the instructions uh, and must be objective, accurate, and documentary. And of course, it's uh, much more in line uh, with uh, the needs of science, but most of them do not have artistic value and polysemantic meanings uh, like photographs of the 19th, early 20th century. Thank you for your attention.